facilitate that process. But the planning board is a fact-finding body. <coughs> Well, this is the fact you presented today on the report I recommended to the city council. The planning board members, and I start with Ms. Jackson. I'm Joyce Jackson, Ward 3. Ms. Richard, Ward 3. Senator McCarthy, Ward 2. Michael Barker, Ward 1. Barry Banks, Ward 6. And then Michael Booker, Ward 2. Simon Mitchell, Ward 2. Jimmy Robinson, Ward 7. Richard Clayton, Ward 5. Bo Brown, Ward 4. Jim McCraw, Ward 7. And the city staff. Azamba Williams, Office of City Attorney. Teresa Moses, Zoning Division. That's for Ainsworth, Zoning Division. Now we also have some appointed planning board members that I think will take office next month. If y'all will stand and speak yourselves, please. Those that are here. Eric Moore with more four. He was last night. Norwood. Norwood. Thank you. John Scarborough, Ward 1. Yolanda McElroy, Ward 1. Brian Brazell, Ward 4. Cassandra Welchland, Ward 5. Is that it? Thank you. Thank you. So the board members got the minutes before you, uh, December the 17th. Yes, sir. I'm going to go to the next for December 2015. We adopt it. Second. Sure. I'll check motion. And a motion and a second. And a discussion. If you have motion, raise your right hand, please. Anyone against the motion? And I'll take the motion to move the motion here by passage. We have a reporter today, as normal, to record the proceeding. If you want to have a copy, if you want to speak for this body, there was a form on the table. If you haven't signed that, please do so. If you're going to speak for this body, please stand at this time. Please want to record the report. Those who want to speak today, I'm in the table. The process is as follows. We will take the cases as I was as I articulated in terms of taking that general case first. The spokesperson for a petition will have 15 minutes to present that case. If there's more than one person to speak for a case or against a case, please open that your time, not to exceed 15 minutes. The spokespeople for the opposition have also had 15 minutes. The difference is that the opposition has no rebuttal. The spokesperson for the petition has a rebuttal time, but it's also included in the 15 minutes. And if you haven't done the form on the table, please do so. We of course ask you to compile your remarks to the items outlined in the statement. It should be addressed for rezoning, special exception. Sir, I'm hard of hearing. Can people speak up or is there a system in here to help us hear? A microphone. Mm -hmm. Well, we'll all have to do our very best to speak loud. I, I, I apologize. Thank you. Okay. I cannot take questions from the audience. Questions on each decision by points. Uh, from the board members and staff as necessary. Ms. Andrew, were they properly at the time? They were. Then we have a forum present and facilitate people's time. We're going to take uh, case number 3887 first. The city, please. Petition. This is petition number 3887 for 5635 Old Kent Road. Uh, the petitioner is Colonial Jackson, LLC, with Mike Lawrence as a representative. The uh, zoning is a requested action for the rezoning of the property from special use district to community mixed use to allow for the redevelopment of the property for mixed uses. This is 
an aerial vicinity map. This map shows the subject property and the surrounding <coughs> land uses. As you can see, the land uses surrounding the map include um, single family residential and um, institutional uses along with some commercial uses. This is a zoning map for the area and shows that the subject property is zoned SUD, Special Use District. The properties to the north are zoned R1A, Single Family Residential District, um, and C2, Limited Commercial District. East is zoned R1A, Single Family Residential District, and also Special Use District, and C2, Limited Commercial District. South of the property is zoned R1A, single family residential. West is zoned R1, single family residential. This is a future land use map for the area. It shows that the subject property is a part of the future land use designation for park open space. This is the existing land use map for the area. Um, it shows that this property at one time was a recreational facility, but it is now vacant. This is just a preliminary uh, concept plan. Of course, you can see that subject to change. <coughs> These are the site photos for the area. The pictures in the top left is the subject property. The picture in the top right are the properties to the east. The picture in the bottom left are the properties to the I'm sorry, are the properties to the east of the property, and the picture in the top left is also to the east and north. And the property, the picture in the bottom right are the properties to the west. These are the grounds for granting or rezoning. According to section 1703.02-1A of the zoning ordinance, a rezoning of a property shall not be granted unless the applicant can prove by clear and convincing evidence either that there was a mistake in the original zoning or a substantial change in the land use character of the surrounding area which justifies rezoning the property and a public need for additional property in that area zoned in accordance with the request and said application since previous city council action. These are the land uses that are permitted by right in the special use district and the community mixed use district. The uh, special use district are those areas that are under section 1002 of the zoning ordinance and those land uses are in the community mixed use are regulated by section 703.01-A of the zoning ordinance. Staff recommendation. Staff recommends the approval of the requested rezoning of the property located at 5635 Old Kent Road, parcel number 552-400 from SUD Special Use District to Community Mixed Use Pedestrian Oriented District. This recommendation is based on staff being of the opinion that there has been a substantial change in the land use character of the surrounding area that justifies rezoning the property and there is a public need for additional property in that area zoned in accordance with the request and said application since any previous city council action. Thank you. Questions, comments, so far? Members of the board, I am Mike Lawrence. I am the, the member of Columbia Jackson LLC. We have Neil DeForest, our <coughs> engineer, also a member of the team. We have Rob Heidman, a um, member of the team, and we have Paul Lockard who is the Managing Director of Columbia Jackson LLC. If you have any questions about any aspect of this, we should be able to help you at least get an understanding of what we've done. Colonial Jackson, uh, Colonial Country Club, was formed and built in the early 40s. 
the uh, clubhouse was added in the early 60s in the state that it is now. It's a beautiful place. It one time had membership greater than 1,100 members. The recent recession caused a lot of those members to fall apart, thus affecting the revenues of the club. And some ill-advised financial decisions and the recession combined to end up with Colonial Country Club back in the hands of the bank. Now, from what I understand, the bank, the members of the club had been, it had been announced to them for months, months that the club was in trouble and that it needed some, some fairly quick action. Uh, that didn't happen quick enough for the bank. And when the bank took it back, they began to market the property. Obviously, the members of the club, being so vast, had also started talking to people about being a part of what to do with Colonial Country Club. Every builder, every developer, and every investor, I would bet, in this whole area knew that this was available. According to the bank, there had been many tire pickers. People who came and talked, they talked about this piece or that piece, they talked about this idea or that idea. But in the end, we were the only person who stepped up for the plan that the bank could find palatable and a price that they found acceptable. We wrote the check and we owned it today. Given the fact that the club had been closed for a period of time, given the fact that there had been no members, not enough members to support it, the fact that there had been a whole long list of additional golf courses built in the area, Colonial as a golf club this doesn't have any viability. So we set about to determine what to do with this piece of property. Think about this piece of property. It's 152 acres. It's in the middle of a viable city. It's in an area that one would think would be welcome to grow. We'd we'll be looking forward to something being changed from what it is today, largely weeds, into something that would add to the community that people would be proud of. There's no other tractor's land like this in the Jackson market, from what I'm told by the city. We had entered into many discussions with city, county, people about, gosh, what do you think, what do you think? How do you want to develop it? What do you think it should be? How does it add the most to what we're doing here? And we all came up to the same discussion that community mixed use was the way to go. The thing to remember about Colonial Country Club is that it's 152 acres. It is a large piece of land. We're not coming here talking to you about a lot or a couple of acres, a place to put a car wash or a gas station or something. We're talking about 152 acres. We needed the flexibility that CMU offered for the whole piece. It's impossible to define one use for a parcel that long. The site plan that you saw earlier on the, on the deal, which I believe you all got a, pack, a piece of in your package, is a preliminary site plan, one that we came up with and that we, uh, we think works best for this property. The pictures you see on the, on the, the uh, screen there are projects that I have personally built around the world. That particular one's from Australia, obviously. But <laughs> these, uh, these golf courses, and then you'll see residential projects that I have built over the years, all were built from a piece of ground very much resembling what Colonial is today. It's open. <coughs> in the zoning process, the applicant mails out, in our case, about 150 pieces of mail to all the people around the project site. We did that. We also mailed out that same application list to people and invited them to a community meeting. We wanted to figure out what the community thought about what our plans were. It was, the meeting happened on January 5th, and there was about 140 people there. The meeting, the meeting lasted a little over three hours, and I stayed there and answered questions until nobody raised their hand. Then I stayed another 45 minutes for people that didn't want to raise their hand, they just wanted to ask a question. So I can truthfully say that we gave them 
every opportunity to speak the views. The issues that we heard most often from people, they were concerned about public housing. They didn't want public housing adjacent to their residences. They had a fear of a public school. They didn't want the increased traffic from both people bringing their kids and picking up their kids, and especially school buses. And thirdly, they were all concerned about whatever we might do that might denigrate their property values. Is what we're going to do hurt, going to hurt what their houses are worth? Those were the three things we heard most often. Many of our neighbors vocalized the concern for Section 8 housing. They did not want us to do that. And um, so we, we at one point thought about apartments there. Uh, right now our, our uh, focus is more on townhouses and condominiums, believing that people who actually own that piece of property will have a better interest in keeping it up and keeping it something that our neighbors would be proud of. The public, the public school issue was brought up and everyone roundly said they didn't want a public school there. However, we did have one gentleman in the audience who claimed to be a former member of the school board. And he says, uh, and I, have, I haven't verified it because I don't know how to verify it, but that the school board has no plans for a school in that area. That the schools in that area have capacity to expand, and frankly the school board doesn't have the money to build a new school. So we feel that a school in that area is not likely. One of the, addressing the property values, there's a lot of examples all around Jackson and other areas to tell you that a new development is not going to negatively impact your property values. <clears throat> I mean, Fondren was Fondren a long time before they started renovating, reinvigorating it, and building new things. The houses in the area around Fondren have increased. If you look at Highland Village, same thing. Do you think that the houses in, in uh, Madison and Ridgeland have gone down since they started putting all these magnificent projects up there? I don't think so. So I don't believe it will, they, they can suffer a devaluation. Now during the process of doing the zoning and then the permitting, we have to provide the city staff with a lot of studies, a lot of plans, for their approval. And they have to approve them individually. Uh, I'd like to ask Neil DeForest, our chief engineer, to speak to the things that we've talked to the city staff about so far. Because one of the concerns that the, that the people in Rangman had was how does this impact infrastructure? Roads, water and sewer, drainage. Neil DeForest, um, uh, one of the things that we looked at before purchasing property is how the road drainage impacts of water, sewer, those types of things, and drainage uh, to our neighbors. And would it be possible to do a lower impact development? Do we have to obviously have enough room to do that? We had some discussions with the city engineer's office, uh, looked at existing utility maps for the areas, realized that we had multiple locations or directions to go with both sewer, water, and drainage, so that we weren't making a huge impact on one branch of the sewer system or the water system. So we understand that there's going to be improvements that need to be made in infrastructure, uh, roads, we're going to have to do some drainage work on site to reduce the impact to our neighbors. Uh, and, and that's part of the development process. We just don't know any details on what that's going to look like until we find out what uses we can have on site other than all So. Until we get to the point where we know there's going to be uh, this many homes or uh, some commercial or a certain portion of the project, we don't really know what to design for. Once we get the zoning figured out, see what our limitations are, we can better adjust uh, uh, our assessment of the infrastructure and partner with the city going forward to make some improvements in that area that need to be made, both in the roads, sewer, and water as well. So, we, we've worked with some uh, local engineers, uh, both Wagoner and Crown Engineering, and we're working with those guys. Really, the bulk of that work will take place after we start getting a little bit more uh, solid on what the plan is with the zoning and what we're allowed to do. 
after this process takes its place. But if there's any other questions, I'll be glad to. Thank you. So we have to provide third party engineering reports to the city. The city decides what needs to be done, and they tell us what our share of that is. It has happened in every development I've ever done all over this planet. It's going to be no different here. We expect to contribute, we expect to participate, and we have the budget in place to do that. One of the uh, places that we, our roadway engineer, your roadway engineer, uh, Mr. Robert Lee told me, was that we were going to have to at one point widen Parkway Drive. Parkway Drive is the entry that comes off the whole camera. If we do that, if the studies that we provide, if the ND says we need to do that, we're going to have to need land to widen the road. We have plenty of land on our side to widen the road, but that's not the way roads are widened. Because this road intersects with Oakham Road, and because there's an existing light structure there, I don't know if you realize it, but the two roads don't actually meet together at Oakham. So all of that would have to be changed, removed, and realigned to make widening go on one side. What they would more likely do is widen it on both sides. If they do that, they're going to have to attach some land on the residential side of the street. If they do that, that's going to not make people happy. So what I did was, in the, in the interest of trying to stay away from uh, imminent domain opportunities, uh, opportunities are wrong work, but, uh, I tried to figure out what would happen, what it would cost, how we would address buying those eight homes, including the rental properties out there. So we were trying to figure out what that would cost. We developed a budget because we have them. Okay. Thank you. Yes, we're through talking about that. Uh, we are prepared. Yeah, I know, I want that too. That's not what the form said. The form said we have five minutes of rebuttal after that. That's part of it? <laughs> you didn't say that. All right. Uh, I hope that you think about this process appropriately. We are prepared to use the deed restriction. Um, the deed restriction ability to not put public housing on this land. We are prepared to put, to not put a public school on this land. We're prepared to stipulate to that. To the extent that we can promise that, uh, I'm told that we need to get our lawyers to talk to your lawyers and figure out how that fits in the Fair Housing Act. We will do that legally. We will do that with your approval. But we're prepared to take the two biggest problems that that people have and resolve those in their sense. Thank you. Thank you. Questions, comments? For the record, Ms. Ainsworth, um, how many CME ones do we have around the city? Um, and man, can you name some of them? Well, one of the most recent CME ones we have is the one at East Elbow Drive that's along I-55 Frontage Road. Um, the district at East Elbow, that's one of the most recent ones. We also have another one that just north of the Mercedes-Benz company um, that's on I-55 West. Um, it was an old hotel that they received the CME zoning and they've turned that into an, uh, a successful assisted living facility. Those are the two most recent ones that we had. And the older one? No, community mixed use is a relatively new zoning classification for us. Questions, comments? Next folks, question for the petition, uh, against the petition, I'm sorry. Opposition, please. <coughs> <clears throat> My name is Bob Gilchrist. I'm a homeowner on Parkway, right across from the Colonial Country Club. I'd like to first submit these. I have over 200 petitions, over 160 
from the colonial area. We've got over 60 here from Heatherwood to our south. Carrollwood, uh, not, yeah, Carrollwood, Rollingwood, uh, uh, Ridgewood Estates. These people are totally against this zoning. And uh, I'm going to have to rethink my talk here for what Mike said to y'all. Uh, it's uh, sad. Uh, at the January 6th meeting that he talked about uh, with Colonial LLC and uh, all these people in the room, uh, we all came out of that meeting with this, that if their zoning is approved, these people will have the right to break this property up and sell it to builders for almost any type of project. Uh, include low-income housing, apartments, and shopping centers, anything. Uh, if we give up our rights to this property with this, we will have no say with what goes on after that. We want progress and we would like the country club to develop properly uh, with the right of rezoning to enhance the value of our property. They put in this commercial thing and uh, they haven't given us any uh, thing for the homers on Melrose and Parkway. We don't know whether we'll be looking at an alley and garbage cans or we'll be looking at the front of the store or what. They've given nothing. All they're doing is asking us to trust them. We don't trust them. They've, uh, they came to homeowners on Parkway and offered to buy our home, trying to get us to go along with their zoning. Then they didn't come back. Uh, they had, all they wanted us to do was go along with their zoning. The same thing with the, he just said a bunch of half-truths that are not true. We are scared to death of these people. <coughs> they have never built anything that they could show us. We had as many questions to them, where did you build and what? This gentleman may have been part of some, uh, worked for some company that built something but these people have not done it. They wouldn't give us any examples. They show you beautiful pictures up here. Good gracious, they wouldn't even give us the name of them. We want that uh, place to be our home like it's been for years. Not for some trust me to do this and that. Uh, These letters are not taken lightly. These people have been to meetings, we've talked about it. Uh, we've got to have better than this. We've got to have a PUD or a plan development. If we don't, we're gonna, uh, we think we know what's gonna happen and we can't take the chance. This piece of property is huge. It's gotta be looked at slowly and very thoroughly and it's got to be brought out and to show that what's around it, everything you just showed up there, uh, this young lady just showed, we're home. We want more home. We don't need a shopping center. We have empty spaces all up and down that area, right across the street. You're going to have the people on Melrose and Parkway looking at a shopping center. Our home prices will go down. People don't want their children playing in the yard in front of a, uh, some type of commercial development. Wow. Uh, please look at uh, these letters we've given you and the comments on them by people from all of these areas. And, and let's try to make this a much uh, tighter knit development that can enhance and make all of North Jackson go forward. If they get this type of zoning and some of the uh, low income housing, apartments go in there, there's going to be a flight of people out of here. They, they're leaving. I know a bunch of them that say that. There's a bunch of them here. So uh, let me uh, turn this over to one of my neighbors. we got about four of us got some things to say.
renew and rebuild and redo. We got a lot of people in Madison and Rankin County who like to come back in and can't find anything to buy except run down houses. And I think a lot of uh, our older houses, my home was built in 1952, uh, a lot of these uh, older places, they will be rebuilt, I think. There'll be a lot of rebuilding and redoing if we get the right type development <coughs> starting in that. It will give us a good peace of mind. Without, we don't have right now. Without the loan of your country, we would be in there. Yes, sir. Okay. Other questions? David? My name is David Ford. Uh, I've been a resident in Colonial for seven <clears throat> years and a resident of Jackson for 20 years. Um, I work for Dale Parkins architects here in town, so I have a background in construction and have a very vested interest in the success of the city of Jackson. Um, the current neighborhood around us is all zoned R1. There's limited commercial at the corner of the site right now, and we have commercial property that's vacant around us. Um, the neighborhood I agree could be infilled to single family housing and as an alternative to single family housing, you know, R1, we could also do R3 for townhomes. The majority of their plan is presented as R1 and R3 zoning. We could be sectioned and zoned accordingly and protect the neighborhood around it and keep it more congruous with that neighborhood. The area to the front, um, I think there are other opportunities within the zoning core, zoning ordinance um, for traditional neighborhood developments that might allow for a more thoughtful neighborhood <coughs> development that's more harmonious with residential development. That's all I've got. Thank you. My name is Lisa Williams and I live on Clubview Drive close to the end of Old Canton directly across from the golf course. I have a perfect view of the ninth of the 10th hole. Sure. Um, I stand before you because I'm an implant of Jackson. I came in here in 2000. My grandparents were business owners here for over 40 years. So I've been in this city every summer for most of my entire life and seen both of its growth and some of its deterioration. Unlike many of my neighbors, I've lived all over Jackson over the last 14 years in West, South, and Northwest Jackson. And when my circumstances allowed me to finally become a homeowner in Jackson, my aunt and I, as well as many of our neighbors that have been in this area for 10 years or less, made a conscious decision to buy in Jackson. Although many of our cohorts, friends, family, made choices, of course, as we all know, outside of not only Jackson, but Hines County overall. We moved there because we based on, we're basing it on the stability of this neighborhood. And we also wanted to join people who had made the commitment to stay here when others were leaving. So what we would like um, for the panel to take into consideration is that we believe that many others will buy if that is available for them because our desire is to stabilize the community and to continue to enhance our commitment to the city of Jackson. The presentation that was given to you all earlier um, about the plans for the former country club. As a community, we have some concerns and feelings about this, mostly because the presentation was vague. Um, and we thought that that implied a lack of respect for the largest percentage of property taxpayers in this city. We do definitely want this property developed. However, we believe that the zoning that has been presented to you opens up the possibility of this property being used for whatever and basically going to the highest bidder, which is not conducive to, as um, my neighbor Dale said, to the continuity of this neighborhood. We do respect the ideal of what um, the presenters did share with us. The problem with it is this zoning does not give us any guarantees that their dream will come to fruition because they're not the ones building it. 
we also understand they don't have the commitment to this community or to our city, which leaves us vulnerable to development that can possibly not only stagnate but deteriorate us as that large tax base. We submit um, to those of you who control zoning that you allow things that will allow us to maintain and to properly enhance our residential community. The sanctity of this community is what brought most of us to this area. It is definitely the reason that most people have stayed. So in conclusion, we the residents of Northeast Jackson would like to submit the following points. We don't want to present the problem. We'd like to have some solutions. But we ask this board to respect us as homeowners, as that large tax base. We want to stay where we are, and we want the city to back the reasons why we've made these choices. We specifically ask you to deny this particular type of zoning, and that you demand in our sake, for our sake, planned specificity. What they have mentioned, they knew what was going up when it was zoned. East Over knew what it was. We have no idea, and we ask for that level of respect that has been given to other members of our community closer to the interstate. There is no interstate near Colonial Country Club, which makes us feel as though we are very different. And finally, we ask that you give us, we ask for a commitment from this city that is reflective of the commitment that this community has made to Jackson. We ask that you keep our neighborhood a neighborhood. Thank you. Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Booker. I have a question for legal. Uh, Ms. Ainsbury, Ms. I'm sorry, Ms. Ainsbury, would they have to go through site plan review on anything that's built for that? Yes, sir. All, <coughs> all developments within the community mixed use zone and classification have to go through the site plan review process. Thank you. My name is Bert Green. I'm a bit of an anomaly. I am a native Jacksonian. I was born in the Old Baptist Hospital. I was reared on King's Highway, Rollingwood, and I now live in Carrollwood. I have a very vested interest in this area. I'm a former developer. I know several of you on the board. I know several of you all from the time that I was. In 34 years, I developed in Jackson and in Florida and Alabama. Uh, the first and uh, utmost concern that we have is that these developers have no plan for the area. They don't have any solid plans. It's just a lot of what ifs, we might do, could be, maybe this. Um, the zoning that they're requesting was originally designed for two purposes. One was for downtown Jackson. One time when we first started putting apartments in the retail areas, there was no zoning for that. This is what the special use was designed to do. It was designed for downtown, Fondren, and then in late was adapted for the Highway 80 corridor, which we have. So those are the special use uh, that this is designed for. As the lady pointed out, the ones that have been done recently have been along the interstate, they've been along high usage areas. This is not a high usage area. In the, um, the, the plan, uh, land development plan use of Jackson shows this is to be low density residential, not high density, and it's not to be multi-use like they're asking for either. I don't doubt these people have really good, uh, good designs, and, and I, I don't have any of these objection to their integrity or anything like that uh, at all. I just think it's like President Reagan says, trust but verify. When these guys get this zoning, they can do virtually whatever they want to. They can sell it, they can cut it up, they can do what they want to, they can sell it to outside developers. I've been in that game, I know the racket, I know how it, how it works, I know exactly how, how it happens. Economic problems come up, they want to dump it, somebody comes in, gives them a million bucks more than they pay for it, they're going to dump it. The end user may not be these gentlemen, and most probability probably won't be. It, it leaves us, the city of Jackson open to a potential problem. What we would like to see them do is come back to the plan unit development. That's a solid development, a solid plan, where they or anyone else who the end user would happen to be would have to adhere to that exact zoning and what's there. They don't want to do it, it's difficult to do. I know it, I've done several of them. But it can be done. And if they're as the, uh, dedicated to this area as they say they are, this shouldn't pose a problem to them at all. When I was a developer, I would dictate what was going there. I would do market studies and engineering studies and all types of things to determine what the highest and best use is. 
They don't, they're telling us they don't even know what it is right now. But I would determine what was there, and I would say, this is where we're putting residential, this is where we're putting commercial, this is where we're doing this, that, or whatever. And the builders would come, the developers would come. Pretty successful in most everything we ever did. Um, the, um, we don't need any apartments. We have um, too many apartments in Northeast Jackson. We don't need any high-density residential. This is an R1 district. It doesn't even need any commercial. They pointed out to us in one of their meetings that, that uh, Maywood Mart was redesigned, redeveloped, and is doing great. They could do that with Colonial Mart. If they don't do it with Colonial Mart, it's going to be a blight in the area if they put their nice concept of uh, commercial apart uh, across the street. So, um, okay. Anyway, the last largest piece of undeveloped property, it needs to enhance the full city of Jackson. We're only going to have one opportunity to do this, only once. And if, if we don't uh, if we don't do it properly, um, it's going to be a blight on the city. So we're asking for not to, uh, we're not trying to run the development away. All we want them to do, what we'd like you people to do now, is to deny this zoning, for them to come back with a solid plan that will stay there, like a plan unit development, and then let's work together from there. But we're not against the, uh, the uh, development of this property by any means. Mike, of course, here's a question, Mr. President. I'm sorry. Just, just some clarification. Uh, Ms. Angler, how many mixed uses, mixed use districts do we have in Jackson? Just off the top of your head. How many mixed use districts? Yeah, this type of zoning. I heard someone mention the Highland Village and. Uh, well, Highland Village isn't a mixed use district. Well, it that's, has that's what one I zoning class. I just want to know how many do we have so far? And where are they located? The community mixed use zoning districts, like I said, um, the two most recent is the district at Eastover, then the other is Harmony Courts, which was an assisted living facility. Um, Where's Harmony Courts? Where's that located? Harmony Courts on I 55, just north of the Mercedes Vans. Then, of course, I mentioned to you where the district at Eastover is. Um, and we have some of our other mixed-use districts, uh, the traditional neighborhood, UTC. Fondren has the UTC zoning classification, which allows some of the same kinds of uses that are very similar to what you see in the community mixed-use district. Now, there's been some conversation about um, <coughs> community mixed-use should be located along um, a place like I-55. Mm -hmm. Well, one of the one of the <clears throat> distinctions about a community mixed use district is its flexibility. Is the fact that it can be tailored to whichever area that it's in. It can be tailored to complement that community. So that's why we have zoning classifications like that that have a variety of land uses so that they can be tailored to that specific area. Have you had any? Uh complaints, uh, uh, controversy, uh, in a situation that maybe is negative in terms of uh, these areas? The community mixed use district setting? I mean, does no. anything stand out that's detrimental to it? No, no. Um, the community mixed use districts that we have that have developed, like we said, they have to go through our site plan, site plan review process, which consists of all of our city agencies and the primary agencies in the, in the site plan review process are, is public work. That deals with traffic engineering, all of your other kinds of infrastructures, because those are the things that are generally the detriment to a project is making sure that the infrastructure concerns are addressed and that's what that site plan review process does. Yeah, I sense a great deal of fear in terms of uh, this whole uh, scenario on the part of the residents, of course. And sometimes, you know, fear is nothing but, you have nothing to fear but fear itself. Sometimes. Oh. <laughs> Whatever. Okay, well, thank you. You answered my question. Adam, but just a question. Have we had any tracks this large? And the city started to be changed as such? Mm, none that I'm aware of. The closest one is, is probably going to be the district that we sell. <coughs> the, the largest. 
for community through next year. But it was a long time. That was the only state so. Right, but, but like I, I said. What size was it? I'm sorry? What size? Do you remember? Oh, I don't remember the exact size of it. I don't. somebody who came in and bought the land from us tomorrow couldn't do that either. It's not just, that's why we didn't put it in this to say it'd be clear of the zoning. Zoning can be changed. Deed restrictions are very difficult to change if not impossible. That's why we put them under that category. Good afternoon. I'm Kimberly Hilliard. I'm the homeowner of 129 Colonial Circle 39211. I've lived there for 18 years. The issue here today is that the developer did not provide a specific plan. The rolling pictures that you were provided, we never saw. We asked for We asked for the light developments that they had. We got a lot of he's and haws. The way he's presenting the three-hour meeting, it did not occur that way. We had a lot of discussions, but what is lacking is a specific plan. I am a professional urban planner. I take that role very seriously. I have always submitted 
applications to this commission, and I know exactly what I'm going to do. It is out of the respect for the city, the planning staff, and the residents that live in that area that there should be a little bit more work that is applied to this application to say that we know, based on market studies, that we can put these type of houses here, the commercial development that they're seeking, because across the street, Colonial Mart is a, a commercial strip that is really 50% vacant. So where's the market? He said, the developer said himself, he has no idea what he's going to develop. That's why the homeowners are upset. We have no idea. He doesn't have any idea. He's trying to make this property more marketable by rezoning. Thank you. These pictures, if the city that about those pictures are there. Which pictures, Mr. Robinson? The, the one that you're showing us. That's from the developer. That's from the, all of them. All of them. Those, that, that's from the developer. What, what about and the others? The other pictures that were rolling, those are those are the property of the developer as well. And other spokespeople for the uh, Mr. Mr. Yeah, I, I'm glad that yeah. Jim brought up her. You know, I have worked for her many years. And, HUD is very, very particular about uh, low income, basically discrimination. So, that because Jackson is a HUD grantee, uh, rent recipient of HUD money, uh, there are some, some HUD requirements that have to go along with these decisions. And uh, I said fear a moment ago. I mean fear of lower income people coming to the area. But you know, HUD sometimes. Uh, but sometimes require that uh, they integrate lower income people into <coughs> middle class neighborhoods to try to stabilize those neighborhoods. So that certainly would be a whole implication in this whole matter. Another spokespeople for the opposition. <coughs> Rebuttal, please. Uh, a couple of things. I find it amazing that someone could question our commitment to Jackson. It's in light of no one, no builder, no developer, none of these good people, no one stepping up to buy this property, we bought it. We wrote the check. I don't know how you forget that commitment by just saying, because I don't live here, I don't have a commitment. That's just not a fact. It's not. Um, there's a lot of uh, unknown things here, and it's a fact that we don't know. We do not have one signed contract for this property. We don't. But I call attention to it, if you'd like. The, uh, there's seven acres of driving range added to five more acres, we think, of what might become commercial. The reason we think that is because one of the highest travel non-freeway streets in the whole of the market area is Old Camp Road. It's 24,000 cars a day. The Colonial, that, uh, Atkins, it turns into Colonial, has over 9,000 units a day. That's a fact. So if you say, where is the commercial development around Jackson? It's on streets like those and with that kind of traffic. That's a fact. If you look to the left, there's three things on this property that, that will control its use. The commercial property that fronts Old Canton Road, the clubhouse, which is there, it's a, it's a magnificent structure. You've seen it. The part to the right is the, uh, the point. Oh, okay. There we go. That part right there is segmented by Purple Creek. We have envisioned there an, an age, an age uh, assisted living facility. It's 10 acres, it's the perfect size to put people there. Other than those three things, you'll see that the whole rest of the property is designated for residential. Now in conversations with Crest Development, Landmark Development, and something about 20 of the builders in town, they typically develop 50 lots at a time. And they sell them off to builders as they want to build. But that's all, the 50. That plan right there has over 450 residential units on it. 
right there, in addition to the other uses. So how long are we going to be in here selling lots to builders and selling to them? <laughs> if you're doing 50 a year, I'm going to be here a while. So the point is, we have thought a lot about residential. We do know that it's going to be here. We've thought about uh, right up the road, right up on Canton Road from this, there's a property uh, along North Point, I can't really think of it right now, but it's a uh, zero lot line project. There's about 75 or 100 units in there. They're beautiful. They sell for six five six fifty to seven hundred thousand dollars. We thought something like that might work. In. Yeah, but we're not. <laughs> we don't have any of this fearful things. The city wants me to take this entrance back here. They want me to put a, a stoplight there, put some turn lanes there in order to provide two exits because of fire. Okay, I get that. I know that's going to be very expensive. I know that it's going to be partly my responsibility to do it. I get that. There's some problems on Atkins Road down there. There's a road that has a reverse camber and a curb. I know they're going to ask me to help them fix that. We're prepared to do that. There's, there's nothing magic about this. We know that we have to contribute because we're doing the job. We're prepared to do all of it. I don't have any contract signed for what the commercial property is going to look like because I don't have that. We haven't been able to do that because if you own the store, would you commit to me to build something there if I don't even have the zoning approval that I can build your store there? Of course you wouldn't. Makes no sense. You guys are charged with taking the long view, with looking beyond what's here today and what's going to be here tomorrow. And look at what's going to be here in two years and five years and 20 years. It's your job to decide what this is going to be. We don't have the people signed up. No. no mistake about that. We never hit that fact from anybody. <clears throat> but we have a lot of people that are very interested in it once they know what they can do. You can't tell them what they can do because we have no zoning to do anything. There. Now, if the people who are the two largest developers in this town tell me they're selling 50 lots a year, okay, what, <laughs> how many lots got put on 152 acres? Uh, usually get about four per acre between six and seven hundred units. How long would I be here then to sell that? Is that reasonable to ask? Is it reasonable to ask me to turn my back on 24,000 cars a year that go down Old Canton Road? No, it's not. Anyway, I know you have a tough job. I'm, I'm glad I don't have your job. <laughs> but I do like the job I have. I do like what we plan to do with this property. We talked to a lot of people who come up with that plan, a lot of <coughs> professionals. And we think that with the careful consideration you're going to give this, you're going to see that this is a good plan for this property. It's a good mix of uses. We have 152 acres to deal with. You can't make it all in one thing. I appreciate your time. I appreciate your consideration. If you have any questions, we're all here. Thank you. Yeah, of course. Probably staff and legal. The word Pacific has come up in my position several times. A lot of times, just as a member, I want to know do we have to have Pacifics in order to vote for the other? We have to have the Pacific outline what it's going to be. I would address this. The board is charged to look at what the different uses are, <coughs> potential uses are. Ms. Ainsworth, would you put that on the board? So you have all of those potential uses. You do not need a specific use. They're asking for a rezoning to do any one of those items under CMU one. May I add something to that? Let me ask Chairperson to say something. I might get withdrawn, but in any event, that's a lot of money. And it's pivotal to the city overall that we make a decision of what to have as you don't ask for, in my opinion. I'm not sure that we know exactly what their response should be as of now. But I only got one vote. So what I would I hope that y'all can do it for that, too. 
is finding a way to come to an agreement among yourselves with the government. The toxic. Obviously, if y'all can, leave it to us to vote on the other vote. Now, what I would love to see, quite frankly, is that 10 years from now, we're all proud of whatever it becomes. For the most part, I see you think on other bench. You know, my experience says that there are there are not many large spots of land like this in, 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 in Jackson. This is a prime opportunity to have a housing structure in Jackson. Amen. It really is. How do you cut it? So my first request is can you all talk again and come to some type of consensus between the homeowners association and the developers? I would I would request a table. I'm, and I might not get it. These guys might say, we better develop. But really what I want to see on that 150 acres is something 10 years out that we're all proud of. Yes, and I don't think it's, I don't think at this point, quite frankly, it's been added enough to get us there. But that's just my opinion. We came here to make that. We agree that it should be mostly residential. That's why our plan is what it is. We, we made that same realization. But there are small parts of it. Uh, maybe 30 acres total of the property that don't lend itself to residential. The part where the clubhouse is, you'd have to blow that clubhouse up and do that. That would be a travesty. You'd have to forego the fact that the property's out on Oak Road, forgetting the fact that rep commercial is all up and down on Oak Road. And you'd have to forget the fact that the piece in the north up there would be segmented from the rest of the property. We came here with the offer of making the, the, the three things they told us that they were concerned most about. We addressed them. We addressed the section that to their, remove it so they don't have to be afraid of it. We're prepared to work with the system to the fact that we hope that they don't be afraid of the school. No public school. That was what they specifically said. Increased traffic, school buses, makes us nervous. We made that, we offered that. All of French too. All right, my mind. Sorry. Who's the representative's leadership for that? For the opposition. Is that Mr. Gilchrist? Anybody else? Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. I guess, uh, let me ask you, and I want, I want to be late with this. The question is simple. Are you willing to take time to discuss it more? That's exactly what we do. Are you willing to discuss it more and we table it possibly? If I can get people to do that. We can discuss it more, yeah. Then I'm here, sure. I, I, I'm, I'm the one doing all the giving. I don't see any giving coming from the other side. <laughs> well, that's not correct. Uh, thank, you. thank you, thank you, thank everybody. We got several, <laughs> thank you. We got several hundred people that don't agree with them. <laughs> well, I didn't call you a liar, Mr. Gilchrist, like you called me. Gentlemen, 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 gentlemen. You are, you, you lied. Mr. Gilchrist. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Mr. McGrath would be happy to meet with whomever you like. I'll be voting in the rain. Mr. Chairman. I move that petition number 3887 be tabled. Should we put a date on it? Okay. So next meeting. Next meeting. Yeah. Is that amazing? Great. Whoa, 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 whoa. We can do it today. I don't want to let me in terms of this body meeting again. Oh. Okay. okay. 30 days enough? Mm -hmm. 30 days until the next meeting. Correct. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you. What's, 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 what's the next plan to do? The 25th. The 25th. The 25th. Okay, I, my motion is that it be tabled until our next meeting that will be on. on but I thought we didn't have any cases on for February. Yeah, one that. Second, we will have one. We will have one. Okay, okay. okay. Until, until, until February 25th. Yeah, my motion with the second discussion. 
Uh, point of order. Uh, they're going to be seating some new uh, board members, I believe, uh, next month. And uh, would it be uh, appropriate and, and the right thing to do to throw that in their laps uh, as neophytes? Deal with it one day. No, they got to deal with it. They got to deal with it. <laughs> Sorry. All right. No, it's just not even about the discussion. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to uh, make sure that we have this point clarified. The legal issues that are talked about, about the, the, the housing, what they can and can't agree to. I'd like to know for a fact, not a, 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 a maybe, to get that nailed down too before they come back to us. Well, all right, let me be clear to everybody. We are all think that among you all, there will be a contested history that is above the other. Now, our job, first thing, if you don't do that, it's above one with us. Mm -hmm. So I can't, I don't, I'm not sure how to address that. Maybe we can agree on something to make it easy for you. I'd like to make sure the city is okay with that part that so I'm talking about. That what they come back with is acceptable to the city that we won't get in trouble for some of them. Oh, I, I understood. I understood. Excuse me. For clarification, this body is charged to look at and make a recommendation yeah. to the city council. Right. What you have, you have facts. You have to look. You want to rezone it. Has there been a substantial change in that good? Is there a public need? Oh, I'm forgetting. Three criteria that you have to review in your consideration. I'm mistaken. Or, number two, substantial change in the, in the land use character and the public need for the, the use. Understood. So, you can't get bogged yeah. down on a specific use. If you right. rezone it to CMU1, any of the hypothetical 30 different uses are eligible. That's right. That's right. Period. <laughs> right. They, can, they can express to you what they intend to do, but if you rezone it, you are looking at everything that's available under C and B1. Right. So you have to look at these criteria for rezoning. They offered, they offered to take action on the deeds? Those are your criteria. If they wish to do something separately and those parties agree separately to do that, so that's between them. Yes, between them. We can know <coughs> what they put in there, but <coughs> you have those. Put them back up, please. Two grounds for rezoning. Those are your legal grounds for your determination. Mm -hmm. And I may or may not agree with the zoning request, but I agree with the conditions. That's our decision based on those criteria. Uh, I don't feel very comfortable myself making a decision today. I don't think we've had enough information. Uh, but I think none of us do. That's the whole thing. And I agree with you. I appreciate you taking that answer. Motion in a second. Is it for the discussion? If there was a motion, raise your right hand. Motion. And the one against the motion, raise your right hand. And attention, the motion should take a pass. Thank you. Thank you. Bert. Hey, Bert. Why don't you go see Michael and see if there's a place for y'all to sit down again? Uh, that, that what we need to do? They got that uh, uh, type of zoning uh, and enriching uh, relative zone. No problem. Two public schools out there. He's trying to burn. That's Robert. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Agendas 